practicing radiologist. Uh, I believe I still find time to do some clinical stuff. I'm also a faculty at Johns Hopkins. Uh, prior to joining Higgy, I was at Microsoft four years responsible for uh, platform engineering of multiple of the, uh, the health solution products. Uh, so I was one of the you know, few physicians who actually were an engineering team at Microsoft. That was an interesting experience. Uh, responsible for their um, um, back end system for the personal health record called Health Vault, as well as uh, did all the HIPAA and security compliance for the Windows App and Cloud. So my background has been building uh, back end technologies uh, in my previous startups also, and that's what I did at Microsoft. So Higgy started with a problem that we, um, one of our founder, Michael Carroll, started to think about, and actually was, uh, came out of discussion with uh, Todd. Park, the former CTO, or the current CTO, US CTO, um, on how do you engage consumers in the health and wellness? How do you get them to in, in, interact with their health data and engage with it the way they interact? You know, you check your email every day, do all your social networking things every day. So we embarked, embarked on that. I joined Higgy in March uh, 2012, but was still a PowerPoint stage. Um, built the beta product. Um, uh, by uh, July 2012, we did a production launch in September, and uh, I'll talk about where we are a year from now, from then. So the first thing we really started was is to think about how do you simplify the data for consumers, how do you make them understand, and how do you build gamification aspects of it. And so we really started with the engagement platform approach first. How do you get the body data, the lifestyle data, the community data that the consumer uses and interacts with today with their health, self-health and friend and family health. So came up with the idea of Higgy score. And one of the problems for any B2C consumer health company is that how do you get people to use it? How do you start? I mean, that's you heard. You know, how do you get the person to do it? And from my experience in health hall, we learned that's a very difficult approach. And the idea start, we started to explore was that can we find an existing habit where consumers are already engaging and capture them through that rather than trying to figure out how to get them to create a new habit. So we found that um, there are old analog blood pressure machines you see in the grocery stores and the back of the pharmacy that have been there since the 1980s. Those are used half a billion times annually. It's like that's an awesome habit that people who are actually using these things but the data just stays there. They write down on a piece of paper and then carry it in the pocket. Sometimes you see it on the floor, hanging you know, all over the place. There's no way to see what is happening with the data. So we decided to come up with our own connected kiosks. So we built a very state-of-the-art uh, technology that has a lot of vital uh, type of information, provide privacy screen, security, all the backends running in the Microsoft Windows Azure Cloud. That previously built when I was there, um, and start deploying these um, nationwide. So we did some of the interesting stuff in it. Uh, we put a connect camera in it that lets us do a lot of uh, different analytics, just analyzing the video feed from the camera. Uh, we have a uh, industrial grade weighing scale in it. Uh, we have a blood pressure cuff that is used in hospital ICUs. Uh, the device is uh, FDA certified, AD compliant and all those regulatory stuff that you think about. So, so since we started in September of last year, we are now around uh, 2,000 uh, stations deployed in uh, mostly uh, retail, grocery, pharmacy, and, and corporate locations, some hospitals also. We have had, in one year, more than 7.3 million screenings done through our stations. We have 630,000 plus regular users going through it, I mean, that, that's, that's growing very fast. If you think of it from a consumer you know, company point of view. Uh, you know, uh, as you can see, we're dominant, just predominantly on the East Coast. We just started our West Coast deployment. Uh, we're kind of lagging in the Midwest. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to get traction in the Midwest, but uh, that's happening. So, and what we've done is, uh, done really interesting data aspect of it. Not only are we capturing the vital data the consumer is providing, but their social data, their activity tracking data, providing the reward incentives to interact with, the, uh, with that and come back to our platform again and again. Um, you know, we have helping them do photo journaling, so our mobile app lets you capture what you're eating or what you're doing using photo and government analyzing 
provide you feedback on that. So we're capturing all this aspect in your life and extracting enough data from, from your different interactions all over the place and then giving you incentives in terms of rewards and challenges to come back and interact with us again and again. So I thought, you know, we're talking about data and how we use data. I'll give you an example of one of our uh, uh, scenarios and, and how real time we can see things that are happening. Because the kiosk is connected. Everything is in the cloud. So nothing is cached locally. And every 15 seconds, it calls back home telling us I'm alive. So we can even tell you know, when it's going down. It's all uh, through a 3G network where all data is transmitted securely. So it was interesting that when we started our deployment in the North Case in one of the regional chains over there, uh, September 7th was our first kiosk on the North Case. And we finished that regional chain on October 14th. That was just before Hurricane Sandy hit. So I thought, you know, let's, when we were tracking what is happening on a, on a live basis in our office, if you come to our offices, you'll see the live dashboard of data showing what is happening right now. So here's a snapshot of Hurricane Sandy through the Higgy lens. Let's see what happened. So we finished our last deployment of the kiosk on October 14th. And as you can see, all the dots are represent different stations. The color represents uh, systolic blood pressure level. So the darker the red, the higher blood pressure, the greener it is, the normal range, the more normal it is. Um, and uh, the larger the circle, the more frequently people are using that uh, location. And the graphs are, the, are showing you day by day what is happening in that, uh, uh, with that systolic on top and diastolic at the bottom. So this is, there's no news of Hurricane Sandy. We finished deployment first week. And a typical trend that we see now is Weekdays, blood pressures are high. Weekends, blood pressure go down. And it's consistent. We keep seeing it all the time. So that's the first big pattern you see. And another thing you notice is that everybody is hypertensive. Right? So 73% of our population is either prehypertensive or hypertensive. 56% is either overweight or obese. So even though we are getting the quantified self type of style, but we are very different from your pictures and Nike Plus, whose typical demographic is a female, normal, healthy. Ours is a guy in low socioeconomic status that has hypertensive and is obese. That's our typical user in the majority of our office. So we're actually targeting the right people who are actually causing all the healthcare cost issues. So anyway, here's Hurricane Sandy formed in the Atlantic and was called Hurricane October 22nd. And the news started and people start projecting where it's going to do the landfall on the, on the East Coast. So this is the week of all the news items happening. Right, so 22nd, we know now, and as you can see from the graph, not that much difference. This looks the same. We same the same weekend drop off in the blood pressure, and on the ninth, on the night of October 29th is when the land landfall happened. I'm sure everybody knows how where it came, and uh, here's what happens. And this, watch how dramatic the change is. So we, so we could tell by the minute as our stations were dropping off. Because power would go on, we would have lose our dots on our maps right away. We could sell. I mean, we actually lost one station from other stores was flooded away. Um, but you know, it's drastic drop in our usage. And if you look at all the people, people who are coming in, completely went up, significantly increase in their uh, blood pressures. The weekend effect that we keep seeing dropped. So that's so that this is the immediate aftermath of hurricane right now. What happened when the realities came in and you're not trying to recover? The week after that is what was more interesting. Our volume came back up, but we dropped. There's nobody normal. Everybody is in pre-hypertensive and hypertensive stage. And you, as you can see, that continued for a couple of weeks after that. I don't have, I didn't show more data here, but that's, so we can actually give that real, uh, get that real-time assessment of what is happening data. Um, I wish I had more time. I would show the impact of government shutdown on bottom of DC again. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting data. But I think I'll uh, end it here. Thank you. If you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you for that. Very interesting. I'd love to see what the numbers look like on April 15th as well. <laughs> you know, actually, what this makes me think of is it's sort of big data meets little data. And in a lot of ways, you're putting a stethoscope and a, you know, a blood pressure checker and all the rest of it across the entire country. I mean, the implications of that are really phenomenal. Congratulations on what you've done.
Okay, so now we're going to move into our first panel of the day. Now, this also means it's the first time we've sort of gotten people up on stage and made this work, so I think we can we can do this uh, right. Um, leading the panel, this, the, uh, this panel will be on the power of health data. The moderator is Dr. Lamar Hausbrook, who we talked to this morning, and I'll let him introduce the panelists, but at this time, let me ask Dr. Hausbrook and the panelists.